Welcome to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Chakras, and in today's video, I actually have two digital pianos here in front of me, one of which is being used as a table, and that is my beloved Krumar 7. But I won't be talking much about that in today's video at all. Instead, today's video will be focused on this strange, deformed little thing sitting on top of it, and that would be the Carry On digital piano marketed by Blackstar Amplification UK. This is an interesting little keyboard that I've been seeing cropping up more and more frequently on my YouTube feed, and I figured it would be time for me to check it out as well because I am very curious about this thing. I love the idea of a folding piano and I think that the just the idea of having an ultra portable digital piano is really amazing. However, I have not yet found one that is actually good, although this one I think is better than most, at least in the execution. The way they've put it together and the way they've designed it is a b certainly a bit more structurally sound than the last splitting keyboard that I reviewed a while back. Before I dive into the Carry On piano, though, I wanted to just give a thank you to my patrons over on my Patreon account. Due to the extra support that you folks are giving me, I'm able to make videos like this more often. This little digital piano was only $99, um, which is really interesting. And I get a lot of questions asking me, um, you know, what's a good digital piano for a gift? What's something simple but cool that I can give somebody? And even if this turns out to be not a good digital piano, the idea that it folds up is kind of a cool gimmick. So, I mean, maybe at the end of this we will see whether or not it is in fact a good gift or not. Um, I will link to my Patreon account down in the description of this video so if you want to go join there and be able to support me in making fun interesting videos like this you're more than welcome to do so. So the Carry On Digital Piano, I've already talked about it and I think you can already see its claim to fame and that is that it folds up into a W shape. It's actually quite well done, I like the mechanism behind it. Um, let me pick it up here. It might make some noise because I've got a hard surface here, so excuse that if it does make some noise, but it can fold up into this, and yes, it's an 88 key digital piano thing, and it folds up into this, and that alone is genuinely impressive. Um, and I have to give the creators of this instrument a bit of credit for actually being able to do it, even though I already know it's not going to be an amazing digital piano. The fact that it can do this and still actually make musical tones, in my opinion, is pretty cool. Now, the reason I said the creators of this instrument and not Blackstar Amplification is because, to the best of my knowledge, Blackstar didn't create this. And they didn't really say that they did either. It does say on the packaging, in fact, right here, it says, designed in partnership with Blackstar Amplification. UK. However, I think that may even possibly be a stretch of the truth as well. When I was originally doing research on folding, splitting, uh, compact digital pianos back when I reviewed my splitting one that split in half, I ran across an instrument called the Foldana. Um, this was an instrument that came up in a couple of different YouTube videos. There's a comparison between the splitting one I reviewed, the Foldana that I uh, was looking at, and then also a third one as well. And the Foldana looks suspiciously similar to this. Um, it even says the exact same name over here, Folding Piano 88. So the Foldana was... Uh, a the same exact thing that I believe was being marketed on Instagram, which is why it gained some popularity. There's actually currently, it's not marketed as Foldana or as Carry On, but it's the same exact model available on Inst um, not Instagram, available on Amazon. Um, for a bit more than I paid for this, and it's not marketed Carry On, it's not marketed as Foldana, it's just marketed as nothing in particular. So essentially what Blackstar has done here is they've taken this generic Chinese toy that had gained some popularity before in the past under the Foldana name, and then put their own really cute logo. The logo they did is great. Um, they, so they put their own cute logo on it, and they came up with this clever box um, design, and they are now selling it. So that's just the backstory of this instrument. Um, so it's not really Blackstar's design. I don't believe they've changed anything from the original uh, folding piano. Having said that though, the way that it folds up is actually pretty cool regardless of who made it. So the hinges here, I believe in other videos I've seen, I think they were metal, mine are plastic, not a huge deal, it's only hundred bucks, but I thought they were metal in other videos. So the way these work is you can actually push these down in their up position, their supports, so that when it's fully folded, they are able to support the instrument and not have it be super floppy. So if you pull back these little tabs here and then push this down, it's a little finicky, but then that stays together and that gets it out of the way of the keys. Then these, these little legs over here and then you can unfold it. This isn't the way they tell you to unfold it in the manual, but who cares, it just unfolds. And then you got another leg here and then another one of these odd hinges. And then to undo the hinges, you just pull back these tabs and it snaps up with surprising force and it's very satisfying. 
So that is the way that the carry on piano folds up. And as you can see, it is in fact a full 88 key instrument. It goes all the way down to A and all the way up to C. And there it is stretched out in all of its thin, flat glory. So it's actually quite interesting. I'm going to move it a little bit closer to me because I put it back pretty far. Now, this isn't the only thing you get in the box. You get a few other cool things. One of them is actually this really surprisingly nice little like canvas bag that has their cool carry on logo on it. It even has a little metal button clasp thing to keep everything secure. So you can put this piano inside when it's all folded up, it fits nicely inside of here. And inside of this bag, just for demo purposes, I've put everything that comes in the box minus the styrofoam packing. You've got the owner's manual, You've got this thing, talk about that in a second. You've got this thing, also talk about that in a second. And then you've got a uh, USB cable, and this is the exact one that came with it. So to power this instrument, there's two ways. You can run it with a micro USB cable, or you can simply use the internal battery. I believe it would use a lithium ion battery. That's what most electronics use these days. And so if you use this every day for a year or so, it would start to go flat. But for now, it's going to work just fine. I'm going to try running it just on the battery in today's video. But if it dies, I'll make a cut and I'll add this into the the uh, power supply. So that's everything that comes in the box, including the back. So it's a pretty simple instrument and that's all you get. Now, this is actually a bunch of stickers. For some reason, they have all of the same notes, but you know, C through, you know, A through um, G and all that. But for some reason, after a certain point, they, the letters are lowercase. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe in some areas, treble notes are notated with lowercase and bass is uppercase. I've never known that if that is the case, but for some reason, half of the notes are notated as lowercase and half of them are notated as uppercase and I do not know why. Regardless, that is that. It's a sticker pack. I'm not gonna bother to put that on because I don't need those, but it's nice that it comes with them. The owner's manual is simple and well done. I don't need to talk about that. This here is a pedal. So it actually comes with a little tiny clicky pedal unit um, with a tiny micro jack on the end. So that's kind of interesting. Um, so obviously it's a little bit proprietary. You won't be able to use this tiny pedal with anything else and you won't be able to use anyone's more professional pedal with the folding piano 88, the carry on. And then USB cable, don't need to talk about that. So that's everything that comes in the box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually install that pedal here in a moment. But before I do that, I'm going to boot this on and show you the internal speakers. Now, I usually don't bother to show the internal speakers of digital pianos simply because they're either decent or they're excellent. And either way, I'm just like, I can tell you what they sound like, but I don't think I can really tell you how horrible these internal speakers sound without actually demonstrating them for you. So what I'm going to do here is just play a few notes and let you guys hear the gorgeous noises that these internal speakers produce. I hope you enjoy. And that is as loud as the instrument goes. Now I'm making fun of the internal speakers a bit, obviously, because they're pretty terrible, but I think anyone who wants to use this probably won't be using the internal speakers much at all. I just thought it would be funny to poke some fun at them because they are pretty bad. You also most likely heard some action noise and the, the way the action of this instrument works is unlike any other digital piano I have ever seen before in my life. If I play it when it's off, Close your eyes and tell me what the noise reminds you of. Just, just think about it for a second. Okay, you can open your eyes now. You didn't really need to, even need to close them, but it sounds like a computer keyboard to me. That the clicky noise sounds like a space bar on a computer keyboard. And that's because that's practically exactly what these keys are. They do not have a fulcrum. They do not have a lever. There is no balance point. It's just a button. Each key is a button. The advantage to this is that the keys feel exactly the same at this end of the key than they do at this end of the key, which is an interesting feature. Um, but regardless, that is how they work. 
They are buttons, like on a computer keyboard. And I've never seen that before ever in my life, and I just think that's so hilariously odd. You can also see that the black keys are very, very flat, and that's because it has to fold up into, P into you know, sections, and the black keys can't be the usual half an inch taller than the white keys. This definitely does throw you off, and I think this is part of the reason why this instrument isn't the most amazing thing ever. As a pianist, um, the black keys are a massive reference when you're playing. If I play that B flat major chord, it doesn't even feel like I'm playing a B flat major chord. It feels like something completely alien. Even though I look at my hands, I'm like, yeah, I've got B flat, I've got D, I've got F, that's B flat major. It just doesn't feel right, because normally my finger would be not that high, but it would be up here and it would feel normal. So that the black keys being so thin definitely decreases the performance um, of this instrument. And obviously you're not going to get amazing performance out of computer keys. Um, but some people might say that perhaps you can practice scales or you can practice chords. And yes, you can practice your chords. The technique is going to be totally different than on a real piano. But even scales are super sketchy because of those black keys. Even something simple like a G major scale, uh, th that, that F sharp being flat and level with the white keys just totally throws me off. And so I always stop and go, wait, is that right? Yeah, that's black key. Okay, sure. Well, we can keep going. Um, so it's just pretty strange. So yes, you could theoretically use this as a performance, not a performance, but as a practice instrument on the go, but it wouldn't really be ideal. I think it would be more of a fun party trick to bring it to someone's house and unfold a piano. It's a cool thing. So let me put this pedal in, and then I will power it on and get the uh, direct line cable hooked up. It does not have a direct line out, but it does have a headphone out. So we'll be using that in today's video to get the sound out of this instrument. Obviously, I'm not going to be recording with the internal speakers because we've heard what those sound like. So what I'm going to do, will this even reach? This might not actually reach the floor. We might have a problem. Um, I'm going to plug this in. Consider it done. And then I'm going to toss this onto the floor and see if it reaches. We might actually have a little problem here. We do not have a little problem. It does reach the floor. We are good. So now let me get the uh, direct line output set up from the headphone jack, and I will give you a sound demonstration with the pedal and with everything else. Before I get started on playing this instrument, I wanted to give a little bit of a disclaimer that this instrument makes it seem like I do not know how to play the piano at all, and that is quite far from the truth. So if you want to see me performing on a real piano and playing real music, I definitely would suggest you go check out my other channel, Milan Recording Studios. Lately, I've been posting a bunch of videos from East Tennessee State University. They were filmed by faculty at the university, but they featured a bunch of different people from a recent Beethoven recital we had, and so I am actually going to be uploading a video of myself playing the first movement of Beethoven's op uh, piano sonata, Opus 54, number 22. So that video will be going live at the same time this video is. So if you're watching this, the other video will be live. So go check that out if you're interested in hearing me play, especially if you're new to the channel. This is the first video of mine you're watching. You won't be very impressed with how I can play this, but believe me that I do know how to actually play the piano. So let's dive into this. By the way, that link for that video will be in the description of this video, if I didn't say that already. So let's dive into this thing. So what I'm actually just going to do is just play you a few chords and then maybe some melodic selections as well. Um, and so you can have an idea of what the default piano patch sounds like. Now, you also have to take into consideration that this instrument is 100 US dollars. And so if it was twice as much, which I, if I believe if I remember correctly, the splitting keyboard I reviewed was about that much. It was like 230 bucks. Um, so that one, the standards were higher. They also lied in their marketing and ran it through a VST to make it sound better than it actually was. So they really lied. Um, so the expectations were quite high. But with this, the expectations are not very high. It's only $100. You can walk into the major musical retailer in the United States and walk out with this. So the expectations here are pretty low. Um, so although I could absolutely tear this thing to shreds, um, I'm going to cut it just a little bit of slack because the company that made this has put some effort into making it fold up nicely. There are some nice features that it has, and they have put some effort. I think, I think they've put about as much effort as they really can with this form factor to make it as musical as possible. Unfortunately, this folding form factor has a lot of shortcomings, and we'll talk about those in today's video. Um, but as a whole, I think this instrument is, in a sense, honestly kind of cool, even if it's not that good of a musical instrument as you're about to hear. So let's check out what the default piano patch on this thing sounds like.
So that is what the default sound on the carry on piano sounds like. And at first it probably didn't actually almost sound that bad when I played those chords. It, it almost sounds respectable, but quickly realized that one of the biggest drawbacks with this instrument is that there is no touch sensitivity. And although it's easy to, to yell at Blackstar for like, why is there no touch sensitivity? If you think about it, how do you add touch sensitivity to computer keys? Because that's essentially what these are. They're really no different than your standard computer keys on your keyboard. Um, and how do you add touch sensitivity to those. I'm not exactly sure how that would work and if you could do it, if it was like a pressure sensor, it would still be kind of weird because although you can hit a note hard and make it loud, you might not necessarily put a lot of pressure and the pressure sensor wouldn't probably consistently pick that up and your dynamics might be all over the place, especially for the price point of a hundred dollars. A thousand, maybe it could be doable. A hundred, certainly not. So although that is a massive shortcoming, it's also kind of understandable that it doesn't have touch sensitivity. If it did have touch sensitivity, that might make it a little bit better. But for me as a pianist, the biggest issue, I believe I already mentioned this, is those weird flat black keys. Now as you can hear, I didn't really have any major issues playing anything there. The chord progressions were, went without a hitch, and the simple melodic thing that I played, which is my treble test piece that I wrote, um, that didn't really have any issues either. I did accidentally hit a couple of notes on accident, they're easy to trigger, but that didn't really have any issues either. Where this starts to have actual problems when you try to play like legitimate music, like actual repertoire on this. There probably is some, like pop music, which is copyrighted, so I won't play that, um, but I'm sure you could play simple pop music, Louis Capaldi, Adele, stuff like that on here, and that would probably work. Um, wouldn't sound amazing, but it would probably work. But if you were to try to play anything classical, um, it hardly works at all. The other thing I wanted to mention is that this thing's really noisy. The keys are actually quite loud, even though I'm running it through my amp I can still I can still hear those keys very loudly and then the pedal is really loud too and it flops all over the place so not the best thing ever um but it's a hundred dollars and it's a little gimmicky so what can you really expect um so let's try out a couple of other sounds I believe sound four it might be sound five I believe sound five is an electric piano let's check it out Now let's try to play some actual classical music on here and you'll see what I mean. It sounds like I'm trying to sight read the piece for the first time in my life. <laughs> So you really can't play any kind of advanced music. Usually I'm able to squeeze that out of every digital piano I've reviewed so far. Not that particular piece, but just more advanced classical. And this, unfortunately, cannot do that. However, you're probably looking at me going, James, you do realize that there's a reason it comes with key stickers in the box, right? This isn't aimed for people who can play Schubert. It's aimed at people who are still finding middle C. And I realize that. So although this is incapable and not designed for advanced classical music, it's always something that's fun for me to push a digital piano to its very limits and see what it can do. And unfortunately, this instrument definitely does have its hard limits. So it is definitely by no means a perfect instrument. Um, and I'm, I think I'm making that very clear, but at the same time, it's really more of a toy and more of a gimmicky toy than it is an actual serious musical instrument. And I think we do have to kind of look at it as being that. Um, 
the 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 design and the mechanism of the way it folds up is much better thought out than the last splitting keyboard that I reviewed. Um, it actually works. It folds up, and that's just it just works better in my opinion. One drawback though to the whole folding thing, similarly to the last one I reviewed where it had a big flex point in the middle. Now this one here, you cannot actually put it on a normal keyboard stand or even a short table. You really have to have it be completely supported. The ends are not supported by about this much, and that's about as much as you can do. That's the reason I'm using my Krumar as a table for this thing. So a traditional keyboard stand, the way it works is it'll typically have two beams that will go out and hold your instrument, and you'll set your keyboard on top of those beams, and all is well and good. However, that wouldn't work with this instrument. If you were to put the beams out here at the edges, right about here, like you normally do, well, you can see what would happen when you set the instrument down, it's just going to fall through onto the floor. If you put the beams on the other side of those hinges, the opposite thing happens, and it does this. So if you had your beams here, your the ends of the key are going to weigh it down, and it's going to fold in the middle. Even if you put your the support beams underneath of these hinges, it maybe could balance, but as soon as you went to play a low key, it would fold in half again. So you're not going to be able to put it on any kind of a floating support platform like you would a normal digital piano. Um, however, the one weird advantage is that it has is although it says in the manual to not place it down on an uneven surface, you totally can, and it adapts to it. So say, for example, that I put it down on some kind of weird surface that has a bump in the middle, it adapts to it, and you can keep playing. And although it wouldn't really play very well, I don't think you'd play much worse with it being all folded up like this than you already would because you can't really play in it very well to begin with. So that is kind of an interesting little feature about it is that you don't have to have a completely flat surface. It can actually kind of adjust and not really affect your playing all that much, which is pretty cool. So it also has some genuinely interesting features that aren't groundbreaking, but it's interesting that a gimmicky keyboard like this actually has features like this. For example, you can actually transpose the keys. Take a listen. You can only go up six half steps in either direction, but yes, you can transpose it. So that's kind of cool. And like I said, you can go back in the other direction. You also have um, accompaniments. they take a long time sometimes to adjust to the right key and the accompaniment side of things isn't very good but the rhythms are actually pretty decent for a hundred dollar digital piano take a listen Like, that's actually respectable. I could have some fun with that. Um, so if the accompaniment side of things was thrown away and it was just the rhythms, that would be pretty cool. There's also a demo button. I'm not really going to bother with that. But there is also a metronome built right into the thing. It's a metronome. It's not too much to say about it, but it's a metronome. And it's there, which I think is actually kind of cool. So although it obviously is not a serious musical instrument, and it obviously has its shortcomings, and you can hardly make music with it, it does have some useful features, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Now let's dive through some of the other sounds that are inside of this instrument, because although they'll be on the same caliber as what we've already heard, I don't even know what else is in here, and I'm really curious to see what some of these other sounds are. So what I'm going to do is just run through a bunch of them and just play a note or two on the first 15 or so. We're already up to five, or yeah, five. Um, and so, so we can just run through the next 10 or 15 sounds and just see what other sorts of things we get. They're not labeled and for some of them they're going to be so cheesy that it's going to be difficult to figure out what they're supposed to emulate so that'll be part of the fun.
the vibraphone sound cuts out right when it's just about to get good. And one thing I've noticed about this that is actually kind of cool and is something that the Krumar 7 does not have is seamless sound switching. So I can play a note and then change the sound and it won't alter the sound that is already playing, which this bad boy cannot do for many times the price of this little thing. So that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Not everything about this is bad. Um, so let's check out the 10th sound here. I love how on the rotary organ, when you play a higher note, the rotary's spinning faster. And when you play lower notes, it spins slower. That is so funny. I had someone ask on the channel a while back, what's a digital piano that takes one sample and then just smears it across the entire keyboard? Here you go. All right, so let's take out, let's check out the 20th sound here. That's as far as I'm gonna go into the 120 something sounds this thing has. <laughs> is it just me or is that one not actually terrible? the keys on this are a little bit too wide. I haven't measured it, but it seems to me like the keys are just a little bit too unnaturally wide as well, which also might be why my playing on this is absolutely terrible. So that has been a basic review of the Carry On Folding Piano. So is it a good instrument? Not really. Is it a cool instrument? Kind of, in a weird way, because it's not every day let me turn off the musical instrument. It's not every day that you see a little digital piano thing that goes from being all nice and flatly laid out to being able to do this, right? You don't see this every day. And that, that's just cool. That's just really neat. I went from having an 88 key keyboard to having this in a fraction of a second, not a fraction of a second, but in a matter of seconds. And even though it's not the greatest piano on the face of the earth, that's just, that's just cool, in my opinion. I think that's really cool. So to continue the question of is it a good instrument, 
No, it's really not. As you can hear, I can barely play the thing. That's backwards. I can barely play the thing. Um, and so would it be a good instrument to begin learning on? Because it's only $100. And my answer is no. You can learn the names of the notes, and that's really about all you're going to be able to do with it. The playing technique is far different from a real piano, um, and you're not really going to learn very much valuable information about how to play the piano with this instrument. Having said that though, I believe I started off this video with the premise of would this make a good gift? And if you're not terribly concerned about actually learning how to play an instrument as you are about just making some noise and having some fun, then yeah, it wouldn't be a terrible gift for a child who doesn't maybe have that much interest in a piano. But if they did, maybe a folding piano would get their interest and they'd be like, dude, this is cool. I want something a little better now so I can actually play things. Maybe, I don't know. As, as, as terrible of a keyboard instrument and a musical instrument this is, I honestly don't hate it, which is really weird because I should, I can hardly play the thing. But yet at the same time, I just feel like the engineering and the design of the whole folding mechanism is honestly genuinely kind of neat. And as a result, part of me honestly kind of likes this stupid instrument. So that has been my review of the carry on piano. Um, I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. It's honestly been kind of fun uh, to take a look at this really strange little musical gimmick and to see just how good or bad it actually is. And I think in the end of the day, musically, it's terrible. Visually, it's pretty cool. So I think that's been my review and I think that just about wraps up everything there is to say about this interesting little piece of engineering. I'm gonna leave it set up like that because it looks kinda cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, you might wanna go check out my channel to hear me playing an actual musical instrument. If you want, you can go check out the review of the Krumar 7 right here and you can hear how awesome that thing sounds. Um, and I absolutely love this thing. So. If you guys did enjoy the video, like I said, go check out some of my other videos. Um, if you also want, like I said, you can sign up for my Patreon account. You don't have to, but you're more than welcome to do so. And doing so will enable me to do more fun videos about odd little instruments like this more in the future, which is awesome. And like I said, if you wanna hear me playing on a real piano and playing real music, definitely go check out that video from ETSU and their Beethoven recital that I did a while back. And I've just uploaded it today. So that video is live right now. So go check out that, those videos and if you do that, Thank you very much. Thank you for subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.